Hey guys, and welcome to another hit film tutorial. A treat for all of you pro users, we've got Mike Miller, Tree M23, back again to show you how to improve your color grading using scopes. In last week's video, he covered the basics, and now he's going to put them into practice. Enjoy! Hi everybody, I'm Mike Miller, here with part two of our scopes tutorial, and I'm still sick as a dog. In the first part of our scopes tutorial, we looked at how to read the scopes in HitFilm Pro 2017. If you missed that tutorial, there will be a link in the description below. Today, we're going to look at how to use scopes to aid in color correcting in HitFilm Pro 2017 using the following three examples. This is a clip I shot at the Winchester Mystery House. Looking at the waveform for this video, I can see that I have a lot of areas hitting that zero line, corresponding to these shadows on the right side of the screen. Because these shadows are already so dark, as I choose to color correct this footage, I know that the one thing I absolutely cannot do is lower any levels. I'm already clipping shadow details and don't want to lose any more of what's left of the detail in this area of the road. Looking over here, I can see that I have a few small areas that are getting close to 100%, but the general top brightness is in the 90s. This means that if I wanted to come over here and add a little bit of contrast using curves, I can probably go ahead and raise the midtone brightness quite a bit without clipping the image. And then over here, I would want to be more careful in lowering my shadows. So by toggling the curves adjustment off and on and looking at the waveform display, we can see that I've managed to raise the midtone levels without clipping the shadows any further and without really raising the sky or anything to clipping highlight detail. And here we can see a split screen of the original uncorrected version and the brightened version. Looking at this example, just a video I shot out in the mountains, we can see that I have the opposite problem that I did at the Winchester Mystery House. I have a lot of areas of the sky on the horizon clipping to 100% over on the left side of the screen but none of my shadow detail is extending much below 10%. So if I wanted to add curves to this to add more contrast to the image, I have a little bit more play on the bottom than I do on the top. That's probably more extreme than I would want to go. We can also see how curves would be useful if I wanted to color correct this image. There's a lot of yellow on this hill. Unfortunately, a lot of the grass is just, well, dead. So I'm going to change this from a waveform monitor to a parade scope so I can look at each of my color channels individually. My goal is to try and get a little bit more green in this grass without screwing up the sky too much. So the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the red channel. Just by starting to pull down the highlights in the red, I'm already bringing a lot more of a greenish look into this grass. Perhaps by going over into the green channel and pulling up some of the green in the shadow area, pulling it down a little bit in the highlights, and then maybe just coming over to the blue area little bit of that. Toggling this off and on. Looking over at the parade display, I can see that I've managed to get a more greenish look into those hills and a little bit more of a bluish look into the sky without clipping that color, any of the color channels or removing so much red that I'm losing any of that detail. And here's a split-screen comparison of the original versus the color-graded version. In this third example, we're looking at a jellyfish I shot at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And I'm going to switch back from my parade scope to my waveform display. Looking at the waveform display, I can see that I have a lot of mid-tones between about 30 and about 70 but I don't really have anything bright extending up into the highlights, and I don't really have anything that deep extending into the shadows. And what this shows is that if I choose to add color curves to this, I can actually do a pretty strong contrast curve without blowing out any of the channels of this image. 
maybe something like that. If I shift this over to the parade, perhaps I want to make the water look bluer. However, I can see over here that my blue channel is already near 100%. There isn't a lot of blue that I can add back into that image. What we do see is a lot of red corresponding to these purple areas of the jellyfish, but there's also a fair amount of green in that water as well. So if I wanted to make that water look more blue, the way I'm going to do that is by pulling out green. And again, by using the parade scope, I can just make certain that none of my color channels are clipping too badly into full or no information. That's not bad, but after bluing out my water, I think I want to raise my midtones up a little bit more. As I raise my general contrast curves, I can see that I'm in danger of clipping my red and my blue channels. So I'm going to come back over here and maybe adjust the red just very slightly to reduce some of that clipping. And even maybe just a touch on the blue. And one more time, here's a split screen view of my original video versus the color corrected. There are a lot of other applications for scopes. For example, if you are on set and your camera has a waveform monitor, or you have an external monitor that has a waveform monitor, you can use the waveform monitor to check the lighting of a green screen by looking to see that the green channel is more or less steady at about 50%. You can also use scopes on site to make certain that you are not over or under exposed. For example, with this shot, if the camera I was using had had a waveform monitor, or if I had been using an external monitor with a waveform display, I would have realized that I was underexposing my footage. I either would have lowered the shutter speed, or I would have raised the aperture on the camera, so that I would have had some shadow detail here on the left. As it is, this is pure black. There's really nothing I'm going to be able to do with it in post. So scopes are not only a useful tool in post-production, they're vital on set. I hope you've learned a little bit about scopes from this tutorial, and I'll see you next time.